You can be seated now. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just very briefly detail how we're going to do today's program. There are four candidates slated to be with us today. I know two have arrived, and they are Greg Brannon and Mark Harris. Uh, the format will be this. We'll start. Each candidate will have a total of 20 minutes on the microphone presentation time. That includes speaking time and any live questions from you, the audience, on that microphone there. After that 20 minutes, another 10 minutes will be allotted for one-on-one -on -one discussion before we begin with the next speaker. Uh, first up today is the uh, candidate by the name of Greg Brannon. He is a uh, Kerry OBGYN. Uh, he has a fascinating life story I'm sure he's going to share with you. Uh, Mr. Brannon, uh, we'll give you 20 minutes, and at 18 minutes, I'll give you a two-minute warning, and we'll do the same thing for Mr. Harris, as well as for uh, Fred Westfall and Heather Grant when they arrive. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome candidate for the United States Senate, Greg Brannon. Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful uh, opportunity, this great event. Your hospitality is fantastic. My name is Greg Brannon, and uh, I want to tell a little story. My wife, my wife, lovely wife Jody, has a motto called the Brannon motto. Life is a series of events. So I want to talk a little bit of these events that got me to this point right here. A child born to a teenage mother, because only in this country, only this country, the story we talk about, could occur. South Central Los Angeles, raised by a single mom who laid on her boys. With God's work, His providence, your hard work, there's nothing you could attain. And the attainment is not the end result. It's actually the, the daily struggles, the daily up and downs. That story is actually myself. My mom laid on her heart very clearly, go to church, go to school, or kick your rear end. And she raised her two boys to do, to pursue their dreams. I myself became a doctor, my brother became an attorney. So the single mom had her boys live the American dream. See, only in America, only in America that occur. Because my dream, my life, is no different than yours and millions of others. No other country in the world can this occur. Our country is based upon the individual over the collective. It's based upon this American spirit our founders fought and died for, that it's a land of opportunity, a land, a society based on give it in your all. But it's not always, always the successes that make us great. It's the failures that mold us. Because the American spirit is not the success, it's the falling down and the getting back up. Again, that's what our society is built upon, the can-do. But today, after 100 years of progressivism, they're trying to change the society of the society of can-do to the society of dependency. I say today, today, no more. I say the rebirth of the American spirit can occur today in North Carolina and then travel this country because that American spirit is inside you and I. So the motivation I have to run for office is I've been honored to be a woman's doctor for just 26 years, delivered around 9,000 babies, the protector of innocent life from conception to the older's natural passing. I have seven children myself. My wife is my hero. She put me through school and medical school and residency, working in inner city schools in New York, Chicago, and LA. I have seven children, six girls and a boy. I've been blessed enough to travel the world and teaching medicine and teaching Bible. And what makes America different is that American spirit. It's our founders understood who was exceptional, our creator. And we heard today's prayer. We hold these to be self-evident. These two questions, our founders had to an answer. And they asked themselves as our generations turn that we must ask these same questions. And I hope we answer the same way. Who or what is sovereign? And what is the legitimate role of a government? And both those are answered in the second paragraph of our declaration. We hold these shoes to be self-evident, that we are created by Him with certain inalienable rights. Again, life from the moment of conception to natural passing. Liberty with its freedom and responsibility. And then your pursuit of happiness, your dream. The only legitimate role of a government is the very next sentence. To secure those rights, a government instituted amongst men deriving their just powers from consent of the governed. That's us. We're given our consent 
not to be ruled over, but to have trustees, unbiased umpires, to be honor their oath of this contract so that you can live your life. But today we're being attacked in the most insidious of ways. We're being attacked from within. We have these frauds, these pretenders that pretend they understand the Constitution or say they know better than us. We've become a country of a rule of men, not the rule of law. Today we have executive orders. Judicial activists making law for the bench, all unconstitutional. And a Congress whose responsibility is to write the bills, they don't write them, they don't read them, but they make sure to exempt themselves and their friends. That's not what our founders fought and died for. Not at all. That American spirit, again, is burning inside each of us. That's what sets the passion, the optimism I have. Because my motive goes back to one of George Washington's quotes. He said, the tyranny that one will choose to, the tyranny that one will tolerate is the tyranny one will live under. And we know what's happening right now. We get the details of Obamacare later, but that is tyranny. So what we need to do is understand this motivation we have. Which one of us who have children, if a burglar was coming to their house, would let your child fight the fight? Which one of us would actually step away and let that occur? None of us. We are now if we don't stand up this generation, we are going to have a less free America for our kids and grandkids. That's unacceptable. So that's what motivated motive me after leaving my dream. But now it's my opportunity to give back to this great country. Because the Constitution, this is what this primary is all about. Are we looking for people that understand the Constitution, can apply the Constitution with current issues today? We should not run from our founders, but to our founders. That contract... That Constitution is a voluntary compact between 13 sovereign states, now 50. That gives the federal government 18 functions and 18 functions only in Article 1, Section 8. The two groups, defense and free trade, not regulated trade, free trade. And the Bill of Rights does not grant a single right. It declares God-given natural rights in which the federal government can never infringe upon. The Ninth Amendment protects the individual. The Tenth, Jefferson called, the cornerstone of the Constitution, protects the sovereign state. So that's why I'm running to be an ambassador, a trustee, from this phenomenal sovereign state to the Federal Union, to hold them at bay in, in D.C., to hold them accountable to their 18 functions, then turn back to, D, to our state in Raleigh and say, okay, legislators, now, now do your job and protect us from Common Core, Obamacare, Things that just destroy the individual. Because we understand, we understand clearly those two questions. So what I'm asking for you to do is to think back in history when things have to occur, when a generation has to stand up. I'm going to ask you to join, to join heroes of the past. Frederick Douglass stood up and said no more. Susan B. Anthony stood up and said no more. They were all creating God's image. So we're looking now to the past, the Madisons, the Jeffersons, the Washingtons, the Henrys, in our great state, Persons and Iadell. We're looking to those heroes of the past that stood up for those generations against, against, against tyranny and fought for liberty. Because the battle never changes. It's always freedom. Men want to control other men, but not America. America is the first and only republic based upon the individual over the collective. And then we freely associate to build the greatest society that the world's ever seen. So what we got to do is put us ourselves in that position and look for heroes today that are standing up. The Cruises, the Pauls, the Lees. They're standing up and being hammered by people in both parties because they will not waver on constitutional principles. They will not waver on the oath they took. This campaign will show that we understand the Constitution I've dealt, I've dealt with life and death for 26 years. I will not back down. My backbone is not going to melt. Because be, I've been an oath keeper for all those innocent lives I got to take care of. It's not going to waver. What we're going to do is we're going to ask each other. Because the only way to change this is to stand firm. Is to pledge our life. To pledge our fortune. And to pledge our sacred honor. We may lose our life. People might not like us. We may lose some of our money. But if we never lose our honor, the great sovereign state of North Carolina will be the, 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 the beginning of this great revolution across our state. So today, 
we are literally in a time where they call evil good and good evil. This Affordable Care Act is not affordable, it does not give health care. Orwell talked about that kind of day. He talked about that day when, in the ultimate day of deceit, when people are using these kind of words, in that ultimate day of deceit, telling the truth would be a revolutionary act. So I'm asking all of us, please go to gregbryant.com, we've got our table back there, to join us, to join those great people like Susan B. Anthony, Frederick Douglass, Madison, Jefferson, and today's, like I said, the Cruises, the Pauls. Join us and be revolutionaries. Thank you. I'll be honored to take any questions on any issues. There's a switch on top. Greg, thank you for coming. Uh, There's a switch, switch on, on top. top. Appreciate you being here. My honor. Uh, in, the, in the Declaration of, of Independence, you find the phrase general welfare. The liberals and progressives like to use this to say, yeah, this is, this, is, this is why we need socialism. Because the Constitution, which they wrongly quote, says that the government should take care of the general welfare. But I recall, you might correct me, I th it was either Jefferson or, and or Adams that said that this applied to the government's responsibility to protect our freedoms so that we could go about our general welfare. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, yes, sir. General welfare was actually taken word for word from Article 3 of the Articles of Confederation. Before I became a surgeon, I studied 15 years before I had the scalpel in my hand. Same thing in the last seven, eight years. I've read every convention note of 1787 to 1789. The three in Philadelphia and all the states. And our two, we had two great ones here. So I understood what the General Welfare Clause, it was never debated when Madison took it out of Article 3 of the Articles of Confederation. It was, they lived under it during the Revolutionary War. It's just what you talked about. It's two purposes. It is a general cause that if any tax is, uh, is applied, it helps the benefit of each of them. It could not be like raise money to have a port in Wilmington. It was very specific because both Madison and Jefferson said if the general for clause meant whatever Congress passes, and this is what Madison said, then why did we list them? Why do we enumerate the powers? None. It's the 18 powers and that's it. No Obamacare questions? <laughs> Have you signed up? <laughs> Thank you, sir. I just, uh, my question is pretty simple. You're asking to be elected to a Senate job. Uh, is it going to be a permanent job for you, or are you planning on coming back to your work job after your term is up? Well, thank you, sir. I'm a servant citizen. I've done that for 26 years. I plan on actually delivering babies and doing uh, medical missions during my six years. I'm going to be a U.S. Senator, an ambassador, as if there's no 17th Amendment. The 17th Amendment killed federalism. My job and my job only will be to represent my lobbyist. That's you. That's, that's, that's individual of North Carolina. So the answer is the way I'm going to do the job is I'll be taking so many errors, errors and attacks. I'm not worried about the next election. That's irrelevant. If the, if the people here want me to do another term, fine. But I want to come back, deliver babies, raise my family, and be in North Carolina. So this is not a career. The idea of a career politician is an oxymoron. Thank you. We have a lot of oxymorons. <laughs> that's why I'm running, sir. I actually do have a bomb career question. So what's your alternative? See, the alternative is beautiful. It's called free and and competition. When you look at the Constitution and you look at the 16 words of the Commerce Clause and did the actual intent of the maker, which was to make commerce regular, I think there's, a, there's about 100 health insurance companies in the United States. What if all 100 were in North Carolina? Competition does what? Quality goes up, prices go down. It's free markets, the answer. I don't care if it's education. I don't care if it's health care. I don't care if it's business. See, what they do now is they use this crony capitalism and call it capitalism. That's not. And this health care, my, my opponent in the race, he says it's not if we'll have Obamacare, it's how we implement it. Well, I'm not waving the white flag. This is my sovereign state. 
If they understood Article 6 clause of the Constitution and the 9th and 10th Amendment, there would be no Obamacare in our state, like Alabama and South Carolina. So the answer is simple. It's competition. Believe it or not, in this state, if we want to open a hospital, we have to go to the government and ask for a certificate of need. That's capitalism? That's cronyism. Hello, my name is William Owens. Sir. When you take a look at the Obamacare nightmare, could you explain how this is beginning to affect physicians who are coming out of the industry because of this and how it's going to have added compound effect because there will be more people who have need but not enough physicians to yes, sir. those Our needs. Team. In addition to that, um, how, how our government, both Republicans and Democrats, could allow such an illegal atrocity to even take place to begin with because once it becomes federal law, it's historically unheard of for, for it to be undone. And, and this is not about caring for the people, it's about controlling our liberties and freedoms through this one hook that can really damage our nation. Yes, sir, Thank you. A, uh, my honor. I'll go over it backwards. I believe wholeheartedly this fight over Obamacare shows, again, the fakes and the frauds. Because there's nowhere in Article I, Section 8's health care we had people run for office in 2010 and 12 say, I'm going to run for office to get rid of Obamacare. Then they won and said, well, we can't. Supremacy clause. That's fraudulent. It, 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 it's, 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 if I practice medicine that way, that'd be criminal negligence. So we're going to show in this race clearly. We're going to have anybody defend. Right now, Obamacare is 11 and a half million words of regulations. I want them to defend that, how that helps the individual. So how do we do that? This is where Senator Cruz, Senator Paul, and Senator Lee, in fact, Lee has actually wrote a plan on how to change this over. I wrote a paper three and a half years ago, and this is a two-pronged attack to get rid of Obamacare. The first at the federal level, Article 1, Section 7, Clause 1, all fundraising is in the House. End of story, bottom line. And the House of Confederate Republicans, and they will not defund it, replace them, primary every single person that does not know their role. Then it's the state level. Article 6, Clause 2, says the Constitution is supreme law of the land and pursuant thereof. In our great convention of Hillsborough, they articulate exactly what that meant. Iredell said if it's not listed, it is null and void in the state. In fact, the state legislators are duty-bound to be the protective shield from the Leviathan of the federal government. Now, back to what we can do. Has this happened before? In 1850, the federal government passed a law that somebody with darker skin pigment like you was property, Fugitive Slave Act. In 1857, the Supreme Court said, it is law, you must do it. Wisconsin said in the Joshua Glover case, no, he's a human being made in God's image. Eleven northern states said no to that federal law. That's why South Carolina wanted to secede, because they were not doing that law. So by standing up to evil, we were all created in God's image, we all get life, liberty, and property. So I believe this is that kind of evil. It attacks 150 economy. It will tell you what kind of care if you get care. It tells you who gets it, who does not get it. And the saddest part is it exempts themselves. That's the collective over the individual. The collective over the individual dehumanizes us. We're not black, we're not white, we're not women, we're not male. We're all the human race made in God's image. And I'll be the ambassador for that. And by the way, 50% of doctors retire in the next four years. 50%. Two minutes, Dr. Graham. Two minutes, guys. No more? What we're going to do, guys, is really simple. This primary is going to be clear to show those people who understand that. Please look at who's, who's, who's endorsing us. You know, Rand Paul, Eric Erickson, the National Gun Rights Association, Mike Church, Thomas Woods, we have proven that we understand the Constitution, but more importantly, how to apply it. This constitutional crisis, we cannot have any more of those people to go along, get along. When they talk about light rail, when they talk about toll roads, when they talk about Obamacare, but we try to massage it, you do not keep a little bit of cancer in your body. You get rid of all of it. Thank you.